Hey guys, my name is Shai. Welcome to your pick a card reading focusing on your blocks. What is stopping you? What is in your way? What challenges do you need to overcome? Just what is preventing you from reaching your highest potential or moving into the next bigger, better phase in your life? So go ahead, pick a card. Pile one, two, three, and number four. Hey, pile one, welcome to your reading. Your guys' love life is blocked because of your own internal issues. That is really clear here. You got eight of pentacles, nine of swords, and the lovers. So the lovers is where you want to be. And luckily for you guys, this is where you're going. This is your ultimate trajectory. This is probably a major cycle you're working through right now. But before you can get there, before you can really manifest the relationship that you desire, and this is for people who are in relationships and who are single, if you're in a relationship, you could just be feeling that, you know, even if this is your one true love, or even if you know that this relationship has the potential and the soul connection for it to really be something beautiful and perfect, there's just something not quite right right now. This doesn't need to mean that anybody's doing anything wrong or that anybody's cheating. It's just you know how two people can, you can be in a relationship and really love each other, but just somehow just not be connecting. There can be a sense, a sense of like emotional distance, even if you're in the same room together. And sometimes that can go on for, for years. And for some people that needs to resolve by the relationship breaking up, but for other people that just, it's like each party, if each person in the relationship is too deep in their own personal cycles, then the relationship can't flourish properly. So for you, you know, you're not quite feeling the vibes in your relationship or your love life that you want to because of just your own, you're, you're on a personal journey right now. Eight of Pentacles. You have been working on mastering something. You've been focused on a long-term goal that is more related to your own success and your own physical manifestations. So you haven't really been that focused on your love life, even if you've been dating or even if you've been in a relationship. Eight of Pentacles, this could be somebody who's been in school for a long time um, or just really focused on their career or even if you're more focused on just your own personal health or your own a psychological health. You guys have been to your credit, this is a good thing to be doing and this is what you need to be doing, but you have been self-focused and that doesn't mean self-centered or, or I mean, it doesn't mean selfish. It can mean self-centered, but not in a bad way. It just means that you had to go on your personal journey. You had to get that degree. You had to get your career established. You had to, you know, renovate your house, whatever, whatever material worldly thing you've been working on, you had to do that. And that is good. Don't feel that you shouldn't have been doing that, but it just means that you've been focused more inwards and that is why you're not vibing the relationship that you want quite yet. But it does mean that since you've been doing this work, that is going to put you in a place where you can manifest the lovers, where you can manifest this relationship. But uh, first you got to go through this nine of swords. <sighs> so the nine of swords is, this is the, this is the big block here. This Eight of Pentacles has been sort of your 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 personal journey paradigm, which is partly the problem, but it's not so much of a block because that's just the path you've been on. This Nine of Swords is the block. This is anxiety. This is nightmares. This is psychic attacks. Even this is just all of those bad mental, psychological horrible, nagging, racing thoughts and sleepless nights, all of that. And for some of you, it's like you're so worried about your material problems that it's distracting you from the love that you already have. You know, maybe you already have a loving partner or maybe you already know somebody who you feel like, you know, you could be in a relationship with, but you just you can't focus on giving and receiving that love because you're so worried about everything. It's like, I see somebody sitting in bed at night, like sitting up in bed at night with their, with their partner. And instead of really being together, you are 
worrying about everything. It's like if you're in bed snuggling at night, but you're not really snuggling because you're talking about the bills or trying to figure out how you're going to pay the rent. It's just always, 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 even when you're together, fixating on your problems. It's uh, like, you know, when people have kids together, then they have to go through this horrible extended period of trying to raise children and have a family and provide a stable family life. And actually the bottom of the deck was the four of pentacles. So I know everybody is worried about stability and money and security right now, which is not surprising given when I'm filming this, but um, yeah, it's people with young kids have a really hard time focusing on the relationship and people's marriages can fall apart uh, for years when there's young children, because that is just so stressful and you're, you're working together, you're working on your physical world, you're working on your, physical paradigm and just I, th I think of my parents when me and my sister were little you know they were fighting all the time they were just stressed out to the max and you know always short on money uh even though my parents both worked really hard and it just how can you have <laughs> uh how can you really manifest the lovers how can you be the, the lovers in that kind of atmosphere right so this is what you guys need to find a way out of uh, and that's that's not easy. That's not something you can just snap your fingers and, you know, clear out. Um, I, I absolutely know. I have like I've been th I've been through this energy. And for me, I think this this is a cycle that is really soon going to come to a close. You know, my husband and I have just had uh, we're from different countries. So when we got married, you know, we first of all, we had to get married just to be able to live in the same country. And then the shit we had to go through just to be together and then the shit we had to go through to uh in our first few years of marriage was just uh like i can't there's no way i can tell the whole story here but it was just the kind of crap that would have made most couples crumble so i i get how this is and it, it it for those of you who are in a relationship already if you can work through uh work through this block work through this anxious energy work through all of your struggles together if you can really lean on each other then that is how you can turn uh this you know you can make lemonade out of your lemons life gives you lemons make lemonade that is how you can really become um just this beautiful beautiful partnership make sure you lean on each other if you're in a relationship going through struggles together you know that can either tear you apart or can bring you so close together you just you need to decide that's a choice you can make you both of you need to choose like you know, we can either take this out on each other, we can either tear each other down, or we can just always choose to be in this together. We are always in this together. We got this. You know, always just being understanding and supportive. Clearly, you know, if you're in a relationship with somebody who just can't get it together and is really toxic or narcissistic, that's not going to work. So this, you need to know that you're really truly with the person who is good for you and you, that you're good for each other. But, you know, if you are in that kind of relationship and it's just not flowing the way you want it to right now just every day you make the choice that you're in this shit together man yeah i know how that rolls guys so yeah this nine of swords you need to pr start practicing stepping out of that anxiety it, some of you have you know an anxiety disorder i mean <sighs> anxiety disorders <laughs> like are so 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 common most people have, who have like generalized anxiety disorder just they don't know it they'll never get diagnosed or anything and it's just because of course everybody's anxious right everybody's anxious um and of course that the levels of anxiety vary and you know it can be useful or not useful to get a um to have a diagnosis or anything but that's that's besides the point just anybody with whatever level of anxiety you're having um learning to start setting that aside, learning to step out of that uh, in healthy ways, you know, distracting yourself in a healthy way, observing the anxiety, letting it sit there. You know that you can't get rid of it, but you can just sit with it and observe it. And you can know that it can't actually touch the innermost sovereign part of your soul. The anxiety is, you know, something that you're manifesting in your human experience. It's not actually part of your, you know, eternal soul's consciousness. It is part of your human experience. It is you know, being generated by the neurotransmitters in your brain. This is a, it is the biochemical experience. So I'm going to pull some Oracle cards to see, get some advice on what you guys should do to help work through this anxiety block. Oh, 
building blocks. Yeah, this is taking it literally one step at a time, brick by brick. <laughs> You're building yourself your more ideal future. That includes your more ideal, more optimal frame of mind, um, your more ideal, more optimal physical environment, and your more ideal relationship life, your more ideal love life. You will work through this one step at a time, baby steps. You know, if you're just waking up one morning and thinking, okay, I'm going to, I need to get a handle on my anxiety or my racing thoughts or my compulsive thinking, whatever, whatever that nine of swords is for you. Um, you can't just fix it automatically. You think, okay, <laughs> this is a long-term journey, but every day when you wake up, you just keep going, okay, I'm still on that journey. I am still working on getting a grip on my anxiety. I'm, and you don't even have to think about it as fighting your anxiety. That can just perpetuate your anxiety. Just every day when you get up, even if you feel like, like total shit, you just go, okay, I'm going to do whatever I can today to just feel a little bit better, to get a clear head, to focus on things that make me feel good and that are beneficial for the people around me, for myself and for the people around me one tiny step at a time you know it could be some like it could be the smallest thing i don't so much have generalized anxiety but i have like well i have had for most of my entire life uh severe crippling social anxiety so the fact that i can even make a video i don't even have my face on here but the fact that i can stand up and talk on my feet to some people on youtube is absolutely crazy when you know i was a kid i was that kid who was the most shy and it's funny because my name is shy you know oh call you you better believe the kids at school made fun of me for that but <laughs> you know i was so cripplingly anxious just literally like, i could almost knock it out of the car to go into the classroom because just every moment of my existence growing up was just absolutely consumed with, I can't even describe the level of crippling anxiety. And so, you know, all my life, it's been every day has been a, a struggle to try and face people, to try and face people. I have nothing but a horrifying fear of, of people and I'm 31 and, you know, I've been get, getting a grip on that. I can, I can live a normal life now. But when I was younger, I never would have believed that because I, I literally couldn't like I, I could not handle humans at all. And so I had to do one tiny step at a time. You know, when I was in grade two, that was literally walking into the classroom. That was all I could do. I couldn't talk to anybody. I couldn't interact with any of the other kids. I couldn't even stand with my head up. I would just, you know, walk with like my head down, staring at my shoes and just sit in the corner and cry and not, um, you know, not. I would just pretend I wasn't there. I was like one of those kids just off in La La Land all the time. I was always off in a daydream because I couldn't even handle my environment. But hey, at least I showed up to school and I walked into that classroom. And walking into that classroom was, you know, that was like walking, literally walking into the lion's den. Like, <laughs> so even if the thing you do doesn't seem like big to everybody else's perspective for you, that was your first building block. That was your first step. That was your, you know, brick by brick. So every day you just do whatever it is that you can do. You do something a little bit better. You do something a little bit more bravely. And if that is just sitting there and sitting with your anxiety and then just sitting with it and understanding that it can't control you, you do not need to react to it. You do not need to try and fix it. You do not need to get up and compulsively do something because of your anxiety. Maybe you're anxious about the clutter around your house and you feel like you need to compulsively clean. Just, <laughs> just sit, sit down, look out the window and just sit there with that anxiety and go, this anxiety does not control me. I can just be here and I can feel it and I can observe it, but I'm the boss of it. I do not need to compulsively clean my house right now because... It can't make me do anything and you just sit with it. And if you practice sitting with it day after day after day, eventually you can get, you feel this split where suddenly the anxiety is farther outside of you and you go, wow, now I can really feel myself here as like this node of consciousness and the anxiety is outside of me. And as soon as you make that, that as soon as you get that distance between you and the anxiety, wow, then things get so much easier. And then the anxiety starts to dissolve. It starts to get smaller and smaller. It's like it's withering away because it's no longer feeding off you. Ah, uh, so, you know, you just practice. You just start one step at a time. Building blocks, guys. Building blocks. Beautiful. 
beautiful regeneration. Look at that. This is, <laughs> you guys might feel kind of like this withered little tree in this barren wasteland, but look, can you see there are leaves, brand new green leaves growing on this tree. That is where you're going. You are going to get through this crippling anxiety period, this nine of swords. You're going to get out of that energy and you're going to start to grow your brand new green leaves. I don't even really see this card as a piece of advice. This is where you're going. This is your outcome. You're going to regenerate, be reborn, have your rebirth, and then you come into the lovers. And the lovers, yes, this is your, um, I don't know why, but I, I really just vibed on this as a relationship thing. But, you know, the lovers, that always comes with your internal alignment. Like, you, nobody can be in an optimal, loving, beautiful relationship if they're out of alignment in themselves. So that's how, you, you know, you know, if you're with your soulmate, if you're with your twin flame and your relationship is harmonious and beautiful, that is because you are both in, aligned internally. When people are all, when people are all shattered and mixed up and out of alignment, then the relationships are out of alignment. So really, w once you find yourself in your in the relationship that you wanted to manifest that take that as a sign of, you know, your internal alignment, their internal alignment, and therefore the alignment of your relationship. It is the, it, your inner world being reflected by your external world and so beautiful. So <laughs> hang in there guys. And don't, don't worry about your worries. Don't worry about your anxiety too much. Just, you know, sometimes we can think, Oh, I'm not getting a grip on my anxiety and I'm not, I'm just not, Oh, and I worry too much. And then you're worrying about the fact that you're worrying too much. So, <laughs> Do whatever you need to do to take a chill pill and just do it brick by brick, guys, building blocks, and you're absolutely going to get there. So good luck on your journey. I hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Hey, pal two, welcome to your reading. You guys are going through some shit because you got the devil, the three of swords, and the five of swords. So, man... I feel like, okay, so obviously the Three of Swords is heartbreak. This is literally, we have a bird here who has been pierced by three arrows right through the heart. You know, it is the heartbreak. It is just pain and feeling sorry for yourself. I mean, usually with good reason. Um, and just wanting to cry out for help. The Three of Swords, like, really, really hurts. It is that really piercing heart agony. And it followed by the Five of Swords, which is just external conflict this is like look up you got these rooster and these two chickens so this is literally like hen pecking <laughs> so whatever is going on with you internally with this heartbreak it's being reflected and mirrored externally with just all kinds of crap going down around you uh people bickering people fighting uh sometimes some of you pretty badly it just your life falling apart like this is uh you, now i see why um i was really guided to do this reading because people are like people are suffering i my, i don't know my heart goes out to you guys but uh so this three of swords and five of swords energy is all stemming from the devil the devil is a really complicated card i think people tend to oversimplify it and just say oh it's addictions and oh it's your own self enslavement and oh just set yourself free from your addictive behaviors Yes, that is definitely an element to it. But I, I feel like there's so much more to it that we typically aren't seeing. Um, if you see this one, this is someone who's half woman, half... Maybe she's supposed to be a satyr. She's got hooves for feet. And she's in some kind of twisted, lustful embrace with the devil. So... You got to wonder what's going on here. Did she put herself there? Did she make a deal with the devil? Is she exploring the darker sides of, of her own sexuality? Is she exploring her shadow? She wanted to go deep, deep down to the bottom of the abyss. And she, at some level, she put herself here. You know, the devil energy is self-inflicted, uh, self-inflicted, as you explore your shadow, as you explore the darker sides of the human 
condition. And also with the devil, we have Saturn and Capricorn. And that's why maybe why I feel so strongly about the devil card, because I have five planets, including my sun in Capricorn and Capricorn ruled by Saturn. And the devil is supposed to be the representation of Capricorn in the tarot. And of course, the devil is uh, Lucifer and Saturn is a Lucifer energy. And so into this, so that's why I think the devil isn't just this, you know, self-inflicted addictions uh, type of vibe, although it is that, but that's just like a one level of it. The bigger thing going on here is the Lucifer arc, <laughs> literally the fallen angel, the brightest of the angels, the light bringer fell to the deepest, darkest depths of hell and to the deepest, darkest depths of his inner world, of his psyche. And now he's down there being the fucking devil. Okay, seducing people. And, you know, so simultaneously here, the devil energy is seducing. You are being seduced. You are seducing yourself and you are seducing others. Um, not not necessarily sexually, although it is that, but seducing in 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 the term of uh, in the way of like lying to others, lying to yourself, so that you can cultivate this like goth persona or this just dark and exploring all all of the darker sides. And uh, I don't want to sound like I'm moralizing here because really like I don't know how to tell you guys everything about what I'm what I'm like and what phases I've gone through in life but I really don't think that exploring the darker sides of life is bad not in and of itself um of course don't harm anybody it's only bad if you're harming anybody but if you're sitting in your you know if you're sitting in your room exploring darker things but you're not harming anybody, then that's fine. And sometimes we have to go through those phases where we do, where we entertain dark thoughts, where we go to the bottom of the deep, deepest, darkest depths. Um, you know, that can be, you can think of that as doing shadow work um, or just exploring the full spectrum of human experience. You know, you can only go as high as you can go low. So if you, that, and that is the bigger thing about Capricorn energy is, you know, Capricorn isn't just this mountain goat that is climbing the social ladder like that. <laughs> that's that's like this the smallest bit of Capricorn. The bigger thing of Capricorn energy is, you know, the sea goat. If you look at uh, more esoteric representations of Capricorn, it's a creature that is half water animal half goat and it has come out of the depths so that creature has been to literally the bottom of the abyss like the bottom of the deepest ocean and climbed all the way like out of the marianas trench out of the bottom of the the ocean up onto the land transformed became a new type of animal that could walk on land so that it could keep going so that it could keep striving climbing the mountain climbing the mountain so that it could reach the top that's what Capricorn energy does to me. And like I said, I have five planets in Capricorn. I I really like feel this. And that is the transformative power and the staying power and the striving power and the true magic of Capricorn to go all the way from the bottom, just all the way to the top with nobody's help, with nobody's assistance or even with nobody's approval, just with nothing but your own sheer willpower, your own internal force um you know people who don't know people who don't know anything about astrology uh you know people describe me as being born with a fire into my ass um or being striving those are words that people have literally quoted to me and uh it's i didn't know about astrology then either but looking back it's funny i was like yeah it's because i got fucking five planets in capricorn <laughs> they sense that you know i i was born with a fire into my ass and i am blasting to the top um, but not in the way that people typically think of with Capricorn. I don't, I'm not climbing the, the corporate ladder. I am not climbing the social ladder. I don't have anything to do with, with any kind of group thing. I am a completely like independent hermit type of person. Um, it just completely doing my own thing, uh, irregardless of what the rest of humanity is doing. So it doesn't have to be climbing the social ladder. It can be just climbing your own journey. So I'm sorry for talking about myself so much, but uh, 
with this devil card, I, I don't know how to talk about Capricorn energy in a, um, in a detailed, authentic way without talking about myself because just because I mirror, mirror that I embody that so much. So something about that is relevant to you guys. You guys are, uh, just working <laughs> working so hard you're you're striving so hard and i think you are more you're still i, I you like still under the surface if you think of the sea goat climbing from the bottom of the deep, deepest darkest depths you guys are like still underwater but you're about to break through the surface and once you break through the surface and come up onto land then you need to transform into the goat so that you can keep on going um but, you know, once you become the goat and you're up on land and you're climbing the mountain, now there's sunshine, now there's fresh air, now there's a bit more beauty. You're literally getting closer to the light. Of course, you know, the ocean can, is beautiful uh, in the higher reaches, but in the bottom, you know, you're so deep, you're, you're like, literally, you can't see the sun. You guys have been, I think, honestly, you guys have been, had a period in your life where you were so depressed, you were possibly suicidal. Um, like, I've been there, guys, literally to the bottom of the bottom like i call it the black pit of despair all the way down when there's nowhere farther to go you know yeah uh, some of you may have had that experience where you feel you're just sitting there maybe you've been in bed for days and you just feel like that that thud it's almost as if your soul hit rock bottom and you feel like there's now you know there's nowhere farther down for you to go you've hit the bottom so luckily for you <laughs> once you've hit the bottom there's nowhere to go but up and if you're harnessing this Capricorn energy, you can do this. There's nobody who can, who can climb up out of the bottom of the barrel better than you. So, and it, but it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt all the way. Uh, you're going to have heartache. You're going to have external conflict. It's going to suck. So um, check. Some of you might want to check your birth charts if you're into this kind of thing uh, for Capricorn energy that can really give you a clue about where this kind of thing is playing out um if any of you in your late 20s will welcome to your saturn return just hang in there until you get into your 30s and then things are gonna chill out um but even if you're not having a saturn return saturn can be transiting you in all kinds of various ways so uh for some of you that might be an interesting rabbit hole to go down um for others of you You're just, honestly, guys, I think the only way through this, this, it's like Saturn is blocking you. But the thing with Saturn is, it sucks. Saturn sucks. Like when you're, when you're feeling it, when he's putting the pressure on you, it's, I think, I feel like him as the great cosmic thumb from the sky, just like pushing you down into the dirt. But man, once you come through the other side, um, once you learn that lesson, once you go through his training, he's like some horrible, <laughs> some horrible trainer on a mountain who is, you know, making you walk up, carry water up 2000 flights of stairs every day. Right. <laughs> Just, but man, when you come out of Saturn's training, once you come out of it, you are so strong, you become invincible. You break out of the devil energy and you know, you get closer back to light and it, it's like you become Lucifer going through his redemption arc, becoming the light bringer again, ascending all the way from being Satan to being the the most powerful archangel that is the span of your arc that is why it is so long that is why it is so difficult you are on this just massive transformative cycle and it is long 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 term because of how deep you go but that is only reflective of how, how high you ultimately can go think about it you know the tallest trees have the deepest roots in order to reach the tallest heights you're going to go to the very bottom so I'm going to pull some Oracle cards to see if there's any advice for you guys, but I have a feeling that the only way, the only thing for you guys to do is to just keep being you keep on climbing. And I know you guys can do it just day after day. You just keep climbing. You just keep doing it because that's what Capricorns do. You just relentlessly implacably just keep going no matter how much it fucking sucks. And eventually you come out the other side. Okay. Let's see if we can get some, advice for you guys <laughs> those fell right out a leg up wonderful this 
Yes, guys, here you go. This is somebody or something, some energy is going to come through and give you a break, going to give you a leg up, give you a helping hand. Look at this mother polar bear, you know, looking after her baby. Oh man, you guys have somebody coming through. I, it's going to be different for everybody. Um, I think for a lot of you, this is going to be like a, a spiritual thing. You're going to have some, some, you, you know, some of you might connect with an archangel, you know, you could have Raphael or Metatron come in and suddenly you just, you feel so refreshed and you feel like, God, oh, I can keep going now. Some of you, you might have a, uh, experience where you're connecting with your guides or your higher self a lot more clearly and then you go oh wow once you put your whole struggle into perspective once you understand why you chose to go through this cycle because you did you don't you might not understand it right now but you did this to yourself you did this to yourself because you know you're baller enough to handle it and there are reasons that you did this and it's going to all be good and worth it in the long run and part of your journey is going to be understanding that I can't go into detail about that because it's so personal for each of you, but there is a, there is a bigger picture here. There is a reason why you chose to do this to yourself and you're going to be coming into that understanding over the next year. And yeah, so this could be, you know, spirit guides coming through to help you. And it could also be just people, people coming in and finally giving you a break, but it's more of just an energy of things finally, uh, finally becoming a little bit easier, you know, uh, in, in a way that is a little bit untangible and you might not notice at first, but you, you know, as the months go by, you might think, wow, wow, did that just happen? Like, did I just catch a break on that? Is that the universe giving me a fucking break? Yeah, it is a leg up. You have some kind of break coming through. And I know how shocking that can be after just struggling for so many years. Suddenly, wow, that was, that was almost easy. Wow. Did, did somebody literally just like give me money? Did I somehow just get money somehow? Oh my God. Or wow. Did I just like get offered a job when I didn't even have to try to get it? Just something is going to just smooth out. Things are going to become easier. Um, also with all this Capricorn energy, you know, we have Saturn, Pluto and Jupiter all retrograding in Capricorn. Or I think right at the time of filming this, um, Saturn is in, in, in Aquarius right now, but he's going back into Capricorn. And uh, for those of you watching this in the future, it's, you know, there's something going on for you with Saturn and uh, or just transiting your 10th house or Capricorn in your chart. And uh, I think soon this leg up, especially I put it on top of the devil here, soon that's going to start to clear out. Soon that's going to start to shift. You know, if you're in your Saturn return, while well, you're getting towards the end of it. And let me tell you guys, wow, getting to the end of your Saturn return <laughs> you won't even believe how much easier everything gets. Oh my God. <laughs> okay. And then we had poised come out this poised card. I think this is where you're going your long-term trajectory. You're going to feel like this being here. Just, yes, I got this. Everything is right for you. It came out in reverse and I didn't know any of these cards were re reversed, which means this card was really meant to be reversed for you right now. And this card in reversed, it's like a little bit like the hanged man. So uh, sorry, guys, but it, what that means is you're going to have to wait this one out a little bit more. I think things are, they are going to be smoothing out with the leg up, but with this poised, it's almost saying you need to try and just sit and wait and be okay with the chaos around you. This, this really makes me think Saturn return because in your sad, in my Saturn return anyway, like <laughs> there was literally nothing I could do. I just had to be squished into the dirt and I had to learn to align with my North node and I had to learn to just go with it and suffer through it and struggle through it and learn my lessons and do my inner work and do my transformations and just, there's no way to avoid your Saturn return. You just have to go through it. And that's what this is reminding you of, you know, you you just have to get through it there's don't don't try to like force things right now just keep keep going through it you're not quite there yet but i do think once the time is right once you know the right tra astrological transits happen or once the right energies around you start to shift then you're going to flip that poised and it's going to be upside down and it's going to be right side up and then you're going to feel like that so just one more card here Yin, this is more of the same message. This is 
yin, the feminine half of the yin yang, um, all about surrendering that feminine paradigm of, you know, don't fight your challenges, don't fight your struggles. You surrender to the flow of life, surrender to the divine flow of the universe. Yeah, you guys need to be practicing surrendering and especially with we have all of this Saturnian Capricorn devil energy, which is all about struggling and fighting and, you know, uh, ego, ego is trying to win by exerting your ego and your power on everybody, or at least on yourself and your environment. And the bottom of your deck was Yang. So yeah, you're coming from a masculine paradigm. And uh, being asked to ease into this feminine paradigm of surrender. You can find a whole lot of that on the internet. There's a whole big buzz of right now about the feminine paradigm of surrendering, about learning to surrender. And really, this spread could have been for me during my Saturn return because I had to learn to surrender big time, big time. And you might think, wow, how do I go from the devil to Capricorn to from Saturn into surrender? Because they're like complete opposites. But in a funny way, if you have all this Capricorn energy of just striving and fire under your ass and, you know, I can do it, I am sovereign, I can do anything I set my mind to, because that's part of this energy, you can apply that to surrendering. You can apply that to deep diving into a feminine paradigm of surrender and flow and just trusting the universe, trusting the flow of events, trusting that everything is just going to work itself out perfectly, trusting that that there is a bigger picture and that you chose to be here and that you... Um, designed this game for yourself exactly the way it is unfolding and just flowing into it without judgment, without fear, without controlling everything, just without trying to manipulate events to be your e ego's perfect outcome. You know, you, you might not get your ego's perfect outcome, but you will get your higher self's perfect outcome. So you can be as determined and as dedicated to surrendering as you ever were for climbing a mountain and overcoming obstacles. And yeah, surrender. That is how you will take this poised card in reverse, put it right side up, and then you will enter the flow. And uh, let me tell you guys, I'm just going to use myself as an example one this time, I guess. Uh, I mean, I might, I am a woman, but I have a lot of masculine energy. It's just the way I am, you know, the way I stand, the way I talk, the way I walk, just I don't know. <laughs> and, uh, well, my, I mean, my most recent last two lives were men who were very like manly men <laughs> and my birth chart, you know, I have, like I said, I have five planets in Capricorn. So that is a hell of a lot of masculine energy. Um, I have Scorpio ascending with Pluto conjunct my ascendant in the first house. And I have Mars and Aries in the fifth house. Like my whole chart is just full up with masculine energy. So, and most of my life, that's how I lived. And this last year or two, having to learn to ease into this feminine paradigm of surrender was so alien, so foreign. And I wanted to, at the beginning of that journey, I just thought it was disgusting. The very idea of surrendering, the very idea of giving up the control, the very idea of having trust in anything outside myself was absurd, seemed disgusting, seemed terrible, but I applied myself to it. I dedicated myself to it. And uh, I mean, of course, I still work on that. And there are moments when the feminine paradigm of surrender and flow is not appropriate or applicable. So, you know, you you finesse through it, you use your discernment and decide when it's appropriate or beneficial to you and when it is not. I'm not saying that, you know, the feminine paradigm is the be all end all. No, it's just that there are moments for it. It's a paradigm. Sometimes you're in your masculine paradigm of uh, asserting yourself and almost like, you know, dominating. And sometimes you're in the feminine paradigm of flow and surrender. And they each have their moments, the pendulum swings, right? Um, eventually, you come into a place of harmony where you are holding both simultaneously and using, uh, using them as tools, deciding which one works today, which one works in this moment, which one works in that moment. And that's the ultimate goal. But for now, you guys are absolutely being invited to move into a feminine paradigm of flow and surrender. So I know you guys can do it. <laughs> it is just going, you're going to not like it at first, but you can get the hang of it. Trust me. It's like going down a slide. The worst part, like, like a really big, scary, horrible drop slide, you know, like those water slides that are really, 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 really tall and they're almost vertical. <laughs> the worst part is just getting yourself to go over it. 
So get yourself, just throw yourself off, the, like down the slide. And once you're down the slide, well, then there's no stopping you because now you're, now you're flowing, right? So I know you guys can do it. It's just a matter of making a start. So good luck on your journey and just sending you so much light as you work through these really dense energies. But I know that there is a beautiful, a beautiful future waiting for you. So hang in there. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, pile three, welcome to your reading. I am so glad to see your guys' cards because the first two piles, man, were they going through a rough time. Uh, you guys, you have the 10 of pentacles, the king of cups and justice. So beautiful. Um, whatever like major personal or energetic blocks you guys have, uh, you've already worked through them. Um, maybe really recently, maybe you haven't, maybe you're like listening to him going, what are you talking about? Like, I don't have 10 pentacles. You know, I'm not sitting in this 10 of pentacles of like perfect abundance. I'm not the king of cups in, you know, perfect balance of my emotional body and my environment. Um, but if you aren't seeing that yet, uh, you will soon, uh, you guys are quite evolved. You have been doing the inner work. You have been go you you have already completed some cycles you know you don't get the 10 of pentacles uh unless you have already you know cleared out whatever was blocking your abundance you know you, you absolutely could have in the past um you know been broke for a long time but you tackle you already tackled that problem and you're finally coming into your abundance now you know maybe maybe just now maybe just this month just for the first time and uh you know that abundance can start small but the 10 of pentacles can be like you know the first time Imagine the very first time somebody pays the rent, pays all their bills and has more than 50 bucks left over for food for, you know, the rest of the month. It's like that first time when you see four digits in your bank account, you're like, holy crap, is it happening? It, am I finally, did I finally get a grip on this? Is it finally happening? Yes. It, like it can be that level of abundance. And from there, it, you've broken through that. You've broken through, you've, you know, set a new high for yourself. You've set a new standard from there. Yes, then that can just grow. That can just grow. Same with this King of Cups, same kind of thing. King of Cups. This is somebody who has gone through so much emotional journeying. If you've been overly emotional or under emotional in the past, you know, but you don't get the King of Cups card unless you've already worked through that. You guys have absolutely already uh, worked through your emotional baggage. You know, if you had a shitty childhood, well, you dealt with that. You didn't just like sit on that for the rest of your life sulking about it. I know people who are in, you know, their 60s, 70s, 80s, even their 90s and are still, you know, completely traumatized by their childhood. You guys have overcome that. You guys have, has a, you guys have learned the lessons and you have found a certain amount of emotional stability, but also a certain amount of sensitivity as well. The King of Cups is awesome. And so this video is supposed to be about your blocks that you have right now, right? What do you, you need to overcome right now? What What is your current problem? Um, I mean, these are all really good cards, so it's not immediately clear what that is, but I am getting the sense that, you know, it's to do with this justice card. And what do you do now? How do you make sure that the scales are balanced in the future? How do you, this is kind of complex. Um, I think there is an element of guilt or nervousness about how good you're doing. Um, even though you've come so far and even though you've come out of a lot of struggles and you totally deserve this. You deserve the 10 of pentacles and you deserve to be the king of cups, but you might be like everybody else is struggling so much right now. Why why is it okay for for me to be, you know, getting my life together? Why why is that okay? People are probably envious of you. Um, you know, you might not want to talk about how <laughs> you're feeling so, you know, you're you're feeling so good and you're feeling um, you know, that you actually have financial security right now or at least financial stability and you know, people don't want to hear about it because their life is in the gutter and that can make you feel a little bit guilty. And you can also feel like, oh, this isn't really going to last. This is just a flash in the pan. Things are going to crumble and things are going to fall apart. I'm going to go right back to where, to where I was. It's like you feel the scales are still wobbling. The scales of justice are still wobbling and you're not sure where they're going to fall. You don't know if they're if this is going to be forever. And... Uh, there's an invitation to trust that you can continue in this vein, on this trajectory, if you attune your frequency to that, right? 
if you fixate too much on how everything is going to fall apart, then you're increasing the chances that that is the timeline you will manifest. You want to resonate with your most ideal timeline. You want to resonate with the timeline where your abundance and your love and life and emotional fulfillment keeps increasing. You want to vibrate with that because that puts you on a trajectory that is more probable to align with that timeline. You want to go that way. So you want to resonate with that. Um, the other thing going on here is you want to help the people around you because you feel that the scales are, you know, unbalanced. You see the people around you and you want to help them. Um, so you need to find, figure out a way to do that, but without being a leaky bucket. <laughs> uh, I know people who are leaky buckets. It's like they're, they're, they have all this debt, right? They have all kinds of debt. They have all kinds of bills they need to pay, but suddenly they come into like a couple thousand dollars and then they start giving everybody money because they see people who are worse off than them. But those other people might not actually be worse off than them. They might be living like all broke, right? But they might not have any debt. So it would have been better for that person to save their money and pay off their debt so that they can, you know, get out of debt and then come into a place of actual abundance and then help the people around them, right? You, you want to make sure that you are good first before you help. So yes, help people. Yes, you know, share the wealth, uh, but do it. You, take care of yourself first. You know, don't don't jump the gun on, on handing out assistance to people, um, you know. And it's not just financial, it's also emotional, right? Uh, if you're always helping everybody, if you're always being the shoulder to cry on, but you know, you don't have a shoulder to cry on and you never take a time out to look after yourself, well, then you're just going to drain yourself and then you're not going to be good to anybody. So fill your own cup first and make sure you are looking after yourself before you go helping people. Don't be a leaky bucket. So yeah, the challenge will be how, how to do that. It's interesting, you guys got a very external, like extroverting energy. It doesn't necessarily mean that you're an extrovert, but it means that this energy is involving your environment, it is rippling out around you, you know, just for sake of comparison. The nine of pentacles is all about your own personal sovereign abundance. The ten of pentacles is about you sharing that wealth with your whole community, you know, with your, not, you know, your family, like your personal community of people sharing the wealth, making, uh, having everybody be abundant around you. The king of cups, as like the Queen of Cups, for example, is about her personal emotional stability and her personal intuition and just she being an independent, sovereign, um, watery type of being, right? The King of Cups, it's expanding that to be in alignment with the world around him. It's funny. I just watched Excalibur last night. Do you guys remember that movie? It's like from the early 80s. You know, it's a it's a King Arthur movie. <laughs> It is so 80s and cheesy and campy. Oh my God. Like, I don't know why Merlin is wearing like a metal skull cap, but I don't care how 80s and cheesy and campy it is. I love that movie. I fucking love it. When I was a kid, I was obsessed with it and I like thought I was Merlin. I, 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 don't, I don't know why, like as a little girl, I didn't resonate with Guinevere or even King Arthur or even Lancelot. No, I was Merlin. Okay. Like, <laughs> but anyway, uh, I have a point that in that movie, King Arthur has this, uh, K King Arthur is one with the land, right? The land and the king are one. And uh, when the king isn't doing well, the land goes to shit. But when the king is thriving, the land thrives. That's what this kind of thing is with the king of cups. I think King Arthur is more the king of swords, but the same thing applies here, right? When you are doing well emotionally, your environment is doing well, right? And vice versa. It's a mirroring thing. So know that in order to look after the people around you and your whole environment, you need to look after yourself first, not just from a practical thing, because literally you and your environment are one. You're like King Arthur, the land and the king are one. Uh, you know, if when King Arthur is betrayed and lets himself fall apart, the land goes to famine and pestilence. So literally by doing, by maintaining your own mental, spiritual, and physical health, that literally helps the people around you, you're holding that frequency and they start to attune up to you. They look up to you and they reflect you. So from a very like literal level, looking after yourself, keeping yourself healthy and especially looking after yourself emotionally, that is how you balance the scales. That is one way for you to balance the scales. So 
the main block here is don't yeah it's like you got to find a way to stop worrying about everything around you because there's just so much extroverted energy here you you have to understand that you don't need to feel guilty about being in a good place you don't need to feel like you need to help everybody all the time you need to know that you need to look after yourself first and then you can help everybody you need to look after yourself because literally looking after yourself and keeping yourself high frequency literally helps everybody just by you holding that frequency and you being like a beacon being an example for other people to follow so don't feel bad about it don't let other people drag you down don't let other people like be siphoning out of your bucket <laughs> like um ten of pentacles king of cups justice you have just so much power and stability and potential here it it is really beautiful and i'm gonna pull a couple of oracle cards to see any like advice any further advice here new life this is beautiful this isn't even really advice this is a signal that yes this new world that you've manifested king uh ten of pentacles and king of cups this is your new paradigm you are moving into this new world where everything is abundant and flowing and beautiful um I think there, there is a hint of a message here because I did pull this one in reverse, if you noticed. I think I was actually holding the whole deck upside down. So when I do that, I think of it as like a little light reverse, just something to keep in mind, but not um, not like a huge, huge big deal. But the reminder for this card in reverse is know that even though you were sitting in all of this sovereign energy, even though you are the king, even though you have come into this place of abundance, know that you're not the book literally says remember that you're not always right <laughs> remember that you might be kind of inexperienced at this even though you are the king you're like king arthur when he was just the king when he was a young man you know just you just became the king you're like a new king you were just crowned so don't become too arrogant about this i don't i don't vibe like you guys are arrogant or anything or that that is a big risk for you but yeah there's just a little bit of a reminder coming through for somebody to just remember that you're not always right and remember that you're in, you have a certain level of inexperience. So dedicate yourself to growing and building your skills and becoming better at this. And just know that you, even though you've reached this plateau, um, I mean, it's not a plateau, you've reached a temporary plateau, you've reached a, a certain level of height, but you still have so much farther to go. So don't let it go to your head, I guess. Man, holding the whole deck upside down again. Here we go. Co-create. There you go. There you go. Yes. So <laughs> that really sums up everything I was saying. You are the king. You have come to this place of abundance. And you are concerned about making sure the scales are balanced. So... And you don't want to be too arrogant about it, right? Don't let it go to your head, like I was just saying. So your solution to how to tie all this together, how to make sure that you are continuing to be a sovereign being who's not feeling bad about being in a good position, but also making sure that you are sharing the wealth is to co-create, co-create, literally do things with others. Don't yeah, like I was saying how this is all a really external or extroverted energy. You don't want to be keeping this to yourself. So if there, you know, whatever it is that you're working on, any kind of project, it could be just, you know, <laughs> cleaning your house even, get somebody to help you with it. Because um, it is good for people, like even you might think, oh, you know, so-and-so is so tired or so-and-so has a lot on their mind. They're really stressed out. I'll clean the house myself. No, I mean, you know, it's still good for them to get up and clean their house. That'll actually be good for them and you'll be doing it together which, you know, makes it a co-creative energy. So it could be something as simple as cleaning your house or cooking dinner, right? You don't need to be cooking dinner for everybody all the time. If some, if maybe, you know, you work fewer hours a week or something, or your job is less physically taxing, so you might cook more often. But, you know, you can say, hey, a one night a week, cook with me, you right? co-create. It can be something as simple as that on a, on a bigger level. If you're in any kind of creative project or business endeavors, this is literally make sure you're doing it with people, you know, with your business partner, making sure everything is a, um, 
a true partnership, you know, with business partnerships, sometimes one, one partner can get ahead of the other and, you know, it can end up falling apart and that's not good for the business. That's not good for your employees. That's not good for whatever you're creating together. If you're in a band or any kind of group creative project, co-create, don't let the fact that you're in a better place or you might have a greater flow of creativity right now. You know, you don't want to be like Tom York in the nineties. <laughs> if you guys are familiar with Radiohead, um, they went through a period where, you know, the front man, Tom York was, he basically wrote the whole, whole album and played most of the instruments himself. And, you know, they, I've seen interviews of him talking about how he had to learn to, you know, stop being such a giant dick and to make sure that, you know, he's in a band, therefore he should be in a band and he needs to co-create with everybody, not to try and wrestle control away from his bandmates, right? That's, that's completely self-defeating and just being a dick. So I don't really think you guys are like that, but this, yeah, the reminders to co-create as you move forward. <laughs> that is kind of the solution to uh, wrapping this all up and tying it up with a bow. So good luck with your beautiful energy, guys. It was so good to resonate with this after the previous two uh, piles where everybody was just not in a good way. So it's so good to see that somebody is really coming into a beautiful place right now. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in. Hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hey, pile four, welcome to your reading. Yours is very interesting. Do you guys feel like you recently woke up and found that you were a brand new person almost, or that you were in a brand new place? You got the star, the knight of swords and the page of wands, the star card. This is, you know, healing after your tower moment, but it is also, you know, a star that has fallen and hit earth. You know, it can feel like you're an alien from another world that you don't belong here or that, you know, you just on a mundane level, you move to a new city or a new country and you have to learn how to reestablish yourself there. You need to learn new routines, new ways of being, but also you also need to learn to incorporate, you know, the parts of yourself and the parts of your lifestyle that you don't want to leave behind. It's, it's an alchemizing process of figuring out how to be you in a new place almost like how to be you in a new you, this particular star card, because this deck is all hybrid animals. This is the other kin tarot. With the star card, I really feel other kin, like that word is important on this. Like out of all the cards in the deck, I don't know why this star card is the card that embodies the idea of other kin. Other kin, uh, that can mean something different to everybody, but there is something here. What did you think of when I said other kin for the first time? What does that mean for you? What does that mean for you? For some of you, it can be, you know, gender identity, sexual identity. For others of you, it goes, <laughs> for others of you, it goes way beyond that. For others of you, it has something to do with the stars. You know, you feel like an alien from another world. I know some of my viewers are my fellow star seeds. So hello to you guys. If you got this, uh, this is talking about that. This is your star seed journey. So I don't like to talk too much about you know, starseed stuff in a general reading because I know it doesn't resonate with everybody. And I typically, you know, I like to, I like to talk to people about things that they're inviting. I don't, I don't want to be pushing weird, <laughs> weird stuff out there. So I'm just going to just throwing out the different possibilities about what other kin might mean. It can also mean something else, whatever other kin means to you. This is that that is the journey that you're on that is what you're trying to figure out and the block right now is you don't feel like you can express it knight of swords is all about wanting to charge out there and express some kind of truth some kind convey some kind of message out to the world but i feel like you're blocked in that you don't know how to communicate that you're in some kind of closet all kinds of different closets it you know and it could just be that, you know, maybe you changed careers and you're afraid to tell people because they're going to think, wow, you look, why did you go to medical school if, you, if you're not going to be a doctor? It can be a closet like that. Um, or maybe you became a vegetarian or stopped being a vegetarian and, you know, you, you don't know how to tell people because they're just going to be judging you and they're going to think, wow, why did you change? You know, people don't like it when we change. And when we change, it's hard to communicate that change to others. I think that's what you guys are doing. You have recently changed. You've hybridized in some way. You have tuned into your other kin nature and you don't know how to communicate that with people so the block the block is that throat chakra your guys' throat chakra is blocked i know what that's like when i had my awakening 
uh, it was such a shock to my throat shocker that I literally got laryngitis. Like that is how blocked up my throat shocker was. The process of awakening, <laughs> it was like I couldn't even wake up without like massive, massive clearing out of my throat chakra. And for like a month, I could barely talk. <laughs> so something like that. Your guys' throat chakra is clearing out, clearing out a lot. Um, if you, any of you feel like doing energy work specifically designed to clear out your throat chakra, uh, that could be listening to affirmations, you know, going to a shaman, just what, uh, there's so many different types of energy work that you could do and you have to find what resonates for you. Um, but that would be, you know, there's an invitation here to do that and you can find stuff that's free, you know, I'm not telling anybody to go pay for stuff, but go, you know, go keep your eyes out. If you're interested in doing something like that, you just ask, what I always do is I ask the universe, like, okay, guide me to the type of healing or the type of energy work or the type of clearing work that would be beneficial for me. And I just throw it out there and then I keep my eyes peeled as I browse the internet for the next coming weeks and something will pop out at you and you'll know that's for you when you see it. Because I think when we're having this level of blockage, um, you know, we don't need to do energy work. We don't need to do healing, like physical, like literal healing, like energy healing, I guess is what, what I'm trying to say. Like, you know, Reiki or any kind of, you know, seeing a shaman or something uh, or any kind of guided visual visualizations, stuff like that. You don't need to do it, but it can really speed up the process. You know, you could spend five years trying to clear out your throat chakra just by moving through your life and doing your emotional processing and, and stuff. Or, you know, you could do that in a month by doing whatever type of energy work resonates with you. You can speed up that process so much. And the Knight of Swords is the quickest knight. He wants to be fast. He wants to blast out there. So uh, it's like you guys have a cork plugged into your throat chakra and once that comes out it's gonna like pop right out it's gonna pop out like a bottle of champagne like a cork out of a bottle of champagne like poof you like hit the ceiling hit the chandelier and then you're gonna be off to the races so you just need to pull that cork out but some of you just sitting and meditating and you know connecting with the universe in whatever way you like to do and asking for help pulling the plug out of your throat chakra you can literally visualize pulling a cork out of your throat um, you know, like out the front of your throat or whatever way works for you. You can do that energy work on yourself if you feel like it. And just imagine unplugging your throat chakra. That would so help you because you've already done the change, whatever changes you've gone through, whatever hybridization process or evolution you've gone through, you've already done it. It's it's like that's not the problem. The problem here is just communicating it. And yeah, you know, you're afraid of communicating to people how you've changed because everyone's going to be all up in your shit about it. It's like, why can't I just be me? <laughs> why can't I just be me? Why can't I just express myself and, you know, without everybody being all weird about it? And, you know, if, if for a lot of you that no one's even going to really care, it's not like people are going to be, you know, harassing you about it or, or hating on you about it. It's just that they're going to be weird about it. You know, it's like, Ugh, you know, I did. I made this change. Now I have to explain myself to everybody, and you know, having conversations with your parents and your extended family. It's like at Christmas, you're gonna show up, and then everyone's gonna be like, "Oh, why did you do that?" And you're like, "Why do I have to explain myself to you?" Like, ugh. So, uh, on, so on one level, you're just gonna have to find a way to get okay with that, get used to that idea that yes, people are gonna be weird about it. That doesn't mean that they don't accept you, and that doesn't mean that they aren't that they're judging you. It's just that they're surprised and they're shocked and people are weird when, uh, when they see people change. So yeah, I mean, I feel you guys. I feel you. I hate that. I just, I wish I never had to explain myself to anybody because I don't feel like it's anybody's business. And I find those conversations tedious and just, bleh. but with this Knight of swords, this is a call to communicate for some of you. This is going to evolve all the way up to, you know, you sharing your, your journey, you sharing your experiences with the world. Um, you know, writing your biography, started getting up on YouTube, you know, getting up on the soapbox, starting a blog, or just with your personal uh, circle of people. Um, on some level, you've gone through this change as a forerunner, you know, as, as somebody who does it first, so that it makes it easier for other people to come out of their closets. And, you know, whatever the closet is, it's like, you know, when I was growing up in the 90s, it was still kind of like a thing when somebody came out as gay. Um, it's not, at least, you know, where I grew up, people were always cool about it. Um, 
but it was always like a shock. It was always a surprise. It was like, oh my God, that guy's gay. I mean, like, I'm cool with that, but like, wow, oh my God, like, ugh. it was like always like a, like a deal, right? It was like an event when somebody came out as gay. And now <laughs> it's uh, kind of like nothing. You know, nobody cares anymore when somebody comes out of the closet. And now, you know, at least where I live, um, it's like a non-event. It is a non-issue. It's a, not a conversation piece. It's people just, people don't even have to come out of the closet a lot of the time because they just kind of always express themselves as who they are and everybody always knew and there was no there's no closet to come out of right people people are less less people are in the closet now where i am than they used to be like in the 90s just for example so you know and you got to think if it weren't for all those people back in the 90s who had to come out of the closet in that more traumatic way um you know that was setting the stage for the people now who never have to be in the closet at all that is the kind of thing that you guys are doing you know you have to come out of your closet and make these shifts and you know go through making the shift in the public eye so that the people after you, they don't need to do that. They can just express themselves as who they are from the get go. They never have to be in the closet, whatever type of closet this is. And yeah, and you're going to feel so much better after you do this page of wands. You're going to be starting on your new adventure, you know, riding off into the sunset with your magic wand. In this case, your staff just feeling like all is right with the world and that you have the power to create whatever new future you desire. So the the only issue here, guys, is just working up. I don't even think it's the courage. I don't think you guys are scared. Not really. Not It's not like a lack of courage or bravery. It's that you don't want to have to bother. Uh, or on some level, you're just so used to being secretive. You're in the habit of secrecy that you don't just you don't feel like <laughs> having to tell people. But you're going to be the Knight of Swords and that's part of your mission. That's part of why all this is happening, and you just have to <laughs> have to get used to it. I'm sorry to have to say. Um, I'm going to pull some Oracle cards to get some more specific advice on this for you. New life. This came up for one of the other piles as well. This is beautiful. This is how you're going to feel. Exactly. This is the page of wands. This is, you know, you establishing yourself in your new reality as your new self. And this is, you know, this is new life. This is your new Garden of Eden. Like, just look how beautiful this card is, how good she feels. You're going to wake up in the morning and feel like that. <laughs> You're going to feel like, ah, this is what I worked so hard to like come for. It is like a glass of cold, clear water after you just went on a long hike in the desert, you know, or... After you woke up after a really riotous Friday night and you're hungover and you take, you know, you take a long drink of cold water and it's just so good. So good, guys. That's how you're going to feel. Uh, so that's not really some advice, is it? That <laughs> I asked the universe for advice and they're just affirming that, you know, this is how you're going to, this is how it's going to be. So I think that's a little bit of encouragement. Um that's how good it's going to feel to speak your truth and to finally get out of that closet. It's going to just blast the doors open, let the light in, you know, let the fresh air and the cool, cool, clear streams of water. And everything's going to feel so good. So feel that's, that's your encouragement, guys. You're going to feel good about it. It's going to be good. Co-create. Wow, one of the other piles got this card as well. This is what I was saying about how you ha you are here to go through this process first so that other people can go through it later with more ease. Yes, this is a co-creative venture. And believe it or not, there are other people going through the same thing as you right now. They are part of your soul family, your soul group. They are going through their own closets, their own journeys, their own patterns of... Sorry, my cat is making her presence known, um, distracting me. You are going through your soul family. You're doing this all together. This is part of your, it's like your soul group's group project. So know that you're not walking this alone. Yeah, oh, that's interesting. This is a different message than what this card was for other people. For you guys, I feel like this is more on a soul level. It's coming back to that star. This is part of your soul family. For some of you, you know, it's your star family. And you guys are all working through the same pattern together. So if you feel like, you know, you're alone and you don't want to have to speak out like this. Just remember that, you know, there's a whole group of people, your whole soul family, your whole soul group is going through this same thing. You're all doing it together. And the more, 
each time, you know, it, it can happen, you know, on slightly different timelines, right? You might be a couple months ahead of them, or they might be a couple months ahead of you. And every time one of you does this, every time one of you clears out your throat chakra, and every time one of you rides out there on this quest to speak your truth, it makes it easier for the rest of you. So you're all in it together, but you're all assisting each other as you do it. You know, you if you, you can actually tune ask to tune into your soul family, and you can feel how they are doing the same thing and how you're all co-creating this new life you're all co-creating this new life and i think that's what i'm seeing for you guys your only block here is just pulling that cork out of your throat chakra <laughs> so and i feel like it'll happen really quickly you might actually feel it you might feel the moment that it clears out of course the whole process of building up to that and then healing it you know that goes on but there's going to be a moment where it pops out really quickly and it's going to feel going to feel so good that's when you open up to your new life your new reality your new paradigm so that's it for you guys thank you so much for tuning in hope to see you again soon bye